my favorite tech and gear of the year 2022. I love doing these videos at the end of each year, going through my favorite tech and gear. It doesn't necessarily have to be the latest tech or the best tech in its category or whatever. It's more about what I think has been interesting, what has impressed me, and what I think sort of pushes the boat when it comes to tech and gear. Sorry for any grogginess, I'm still recovering from some sort of cold or cough. It's also why I haven't been uploading. Don't know what's going on, you know, what virus I've got right now, but it just seems to be going everywhere. So yeah, apologies for any bung, bunged upness, basically. First up is the Insta360 Link, and this is by far the best webcam I've ever seen. I actually really like Insta360's thinking here. They've taken what is essentially an action cam and turned it into a webcam. I'm surprised no other company has done this before. Insta360 loves to say it's AI powered, but I feel like every company loves to use the term AI as it seems to be the sort of catch-all when it comes to making your product seem smart. But the features on it are pretty awesome. It's of course 4K, so the quality is pretty good under decent lighting. It has tracking, so you can move around the frame and it will automatically track you. This is pretty sweet as I can see it being very useful if you're trying to demonstrate something in your space away from your desk. It can also point downwards towards your desk if you want to present something that is on your desk itself. And you can use gestures to do things like zoom in and out. I'm seriously impressed by it and it definitely puts pretty much every other webcam to shame. Next up, we have the Logi Blue Sonar, which is actually the very mic that I'm using to record the audio on this video. I'm a huge fan of this mic and the quality of audio it produces. I find it very clean and ideal for stuff like this, videos and podcasts. It's definitely designed to compete with the very popular SM7B, but it's a little cheaper and I also I think it's much better looking. I haven't done anything to the audio, so this is exactly what the mic is picking up. I think any audio expert who knows how to get the most out of voice recordings can make this mic sound absolutely incredible. Like I said, I also think it looks really good. I have both the black and white models, and this black one is my personal favorite. Just has a very clean and minimal design, and I think it's a great all round mic for any sort of audio recordings, videos, podcasts, gaming, whatever it might be fantastic mic. The Apple Watch Ultra. So I reviewed this watch earlier this year and was so impressed by it. Apple have pretty much cornered the smartwatch market, there's no doubt about it. It's by far the most popular smartwatch. So for them to come out with an even beefier version of the Apple Watch for more hardcore users, I thought was quite surprising. It definitely wasn't something I was expecting from. Them. There are a number of things that make this watch impressive to me. The new design, which is pretty different from the normal Apple Watch, built from titanium as well, so it should be rock solid. The larger screen is very nice, and with it being able to go up to 2000 nits, it should be usable in nearly any scenario. There's also the night mode, which is especially useful when in very dark places. The new action button lets you assign shortcuts to various things, so if there's something you do with your Apple Watch regularly, this acts as a shortcut. The battery life is also downright amazing. Probably the most impressive thing for me when it comes to the Apple Watch Ultra. It can easily last three days with pretty normal usage. And I think if you used it quite lightly, you could get even more out of it. The only reason I'm not using it myself, I've gone back to the Series 7, is because I just found the Apple Watch Ultra just to be a bit too big and bulky for me, for my wrist especially. I have smaller wrists, I think. So I prefer the smaller size of the Apple, of the standard Apple Watches. But if they made a smaller version of the Apple Watch Ultra, I would definitely switch. I think it's a fantastic watch and really sort of pushes what smartwatches can do. The LG Jewel Up. So I did a video on the Jewel Up earlier this year and it's one of my most popular videos of the year on my channel. Clearly there is a lot of interest in a monitor like this which is very different from your traditional monitor. Instead of the standard 16 by 19 aspect ratio that most people are used to, this has an aspect ratio of 16 by 18. The resolution is 2560 by 2880, so it's essentially two 1440p monitors stacked together. This is the ideal monitor for productivity-based workflows that require a portrait orientation monitor rather than landscape. I can see software engineers, web designers, CAD designers, and 3D artists using a monitor like this and getting a lot of benefit from it. It also comes with an incredible monitor mount that gives you a lot of flexibility. A few other notable features is the USB-C port that can give you a one cable setup with something like a MacBook as it can charge the laptop at the same time and the ability to have two inputs at the same time. So as an example, I have my MacBook and my PS5 both showing on the monitor at the same time. An all around very interesting monitor, very different from everything else out there. And I can see many people benefiting from a monitor like this. Next up is the Logi Lift mouse. So if you're someone who has issues with regular computer mice, this is a very interesting alternative. I tried it out for a little while and was very impressed at how ergonomic it felt. It's basically a mouse that has been rotated to be a bit more upright 
so it fits more naturally in the hand. It has the regular left and right click as you'd expect, as well as a scroll wheel, a shortcut button below it, and two more shortcut buttons where your thumb rests. I also think an important factor here is that it doesn't look weird. Logitech have done a good job of trying to make it look like a regular mouse and have kept it quite understated. So if you feel like regular mice just aren't that comfortable for you, I'd highly recommend checking this out. It fits much better in the hand and I feel like for the price it's also pretty affordable. I think it's worth giving it a try. It might resolve any of those issues you have with regular mice. The Steam Deck. So I only just got my Steam Deck a few months ago now that they've caught up with shipments. At first, I was a bit surprised at how big this thing was. It is definitely quite big, but it's basically a PC alternative to a Nintendo Switch, which I love. If you're someone who loves gaming, has a Steam library full of games, this is a pretty sweet portable gaming device. I also think the pricing of it is quite reasonable for what you're getting as it's essentially a slim PC that can fit in your backpack. I was particularly impressed by the build quality of it and the layout of everything. It's definitely not as comfortable as a proper gaming controller, but it works. Battery life isn't amazing though, and understandably so as you are basically playing PC games, so it can fly through the battery quite quickly. But with it having USB-C, you could easily carry around a battery bank to give you more gaming time. And then finally, we have the iPhone 14 Pro. And it's not my favorite tech because of the device itself. It's my favorite tech because of the camera it has on the back. The iPhone for me now has changed to what is basically a camera that just happens to have a phone attached to it rather than a phone that has a camera. The pictures that this thing produces are downright incredible and have blown me away that it comes out of a smartphone. I'm a huge photography nerd. I love taking a lot of pictures. And yeah, having a device like this in my pocket that's this slim that can take pictures this good yeah it's just so impressive to me i know it didn't come up high in mkbhd's blind uh, smartphone camera test that he did and understandably so because when shooting in the standard mode with the iphone 14 pro i have found that the images just look a bit overly processed they don't really look that natural looking so for a lot of people they don't look that great to get the best out of it I've been shooting in Pro Raw at the full 48 megapixels and it produces some incredible images. Stuff that almost looks like it came from a professional mirrorless camera. I feel like the pictures when shooting in Pro Raw, because it's not being processed by Apple's whatever, whatever they're doing basically, it just looks a lot more natural looking, I think. It looks a lot more professional looking. I feel like this has really pushed what smartphone cameras can do, and I look forward to shooting more with it over the next year. So that's it for this video, covering some of my favorite tech and gear of 2022. If you have anything interesting that you've bought this year that you really love, it could be something super cheap, it could be something super expensive, whatever it might be, please leave it in the comments below because I'm interested to hear what other people have bought this year and have just really enjoyed, really loved using over the last year. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.